Hey everyone, I'm Kelly with The Suburban Soapbox and today I'm partnering with Harlequin Books to bring you one of my favorite fall recipes, Baked Brie. It's great to enjoy while reading one of their fall themed romance novels such as Small Town Big Magic, Aura of Night, or any of the other titles that they have available for fall. This recipe is super simple to make and you only need three ingredients to pull it off. To make your baked brie, all you're going to need are a few ingredients. And I have a store-bought puff pastry, some type of fall jam. We have fig jam here, but you can mix this up with really whatever you want, like an apple butter or pear butter, pumpkin butter works really well, cranberry sauce, and a wheel of brie. I also have an egg wash. It's one egg with a little bit of water whisked in, and you brush that on top to make it golden and brown. That is optional, you don't have to use that, but we're gonna show you how to do that right before we bake it. So the tools that you're going to need are just a little baking sheet, and I like to use one of these Silpat or silicon baking mats, and this one's for a cake round. It's just the perfect size for your wheel of brie. And you're going to fold out your puff pastry. You don't even have to roll this out. You're just gonna open it up and take the paper out. This was previously frozen, so you're just gonna thaw this on your countertop. You buy this in your grocer's freezer section and then just thaw it and then it folds out beautifully just like that. And then you're gonna take your wheel of brie. You can do this one of two ways. You can cut off the top of your round, which makes it a little easier to like get into the cheese, or you can actually just leave it just like this. So if you're going to leave it just like that, then take a fork and you're just gonna kind of poke some holes in the top. And the reason you're doing this is so that the jam can get down in there into the cheese or apple butter or whatever you're using. But when I cut off the top, it just makes it a little easier for guests to kind of like cut into the puff pastry and serve it. And then you're going to take the fig jam which I love fig jam, and I actually make this a lot in the fall when I can get my hands on some fresh figs. And I know a lot of people that live like in California and stuff have an overabundance of figs. So this makes this great for the fall. You can also use a store-bought fig jam or pumpkin butter. Cranberry sauce is fantastic for Thanksgiving. You can actually take this all the way through to the Christmas season. It's a great appetizer, but it's so good, I could totally eat this for a meal all by myself. We're going to flip the brie over, and then you're just gonna fold up the sides of the puff pastry. And we're just gonna pinch it all together, kind of seal it up the best you can. And that last side, and it doesn't even really have to cover the whole wheel of brie, because now we're just gonna flip it over, and then it's all sealed up and just make sure that your puff pastry is nice and tight around. And then if you're using the egg wash, you're going to take a little pastry brush and just brush the entire surface. And this just makes it glossy and golden brown. You don't have to do this. You can even use butter if you like, like a little bit of melted butter is never a bad idea. And get the whole surface if you're using this. It just makes the presentation a little bit better. If you're not a fan of brie, I know some people don't really like brie, you can use a camembert, which is a milder type of cheese. That works really well for this recipe. I'm not a big fan of brie when it's cold, but I love brie baked. It's fantastic. And that is it. That's all you do to prepare your baked brie. You can do this in advance if you're having a party. So you can do this up to a day in advance. Just leave that egg wash off, cover it with plastic wrap, stick it in your fridge until you're ready to bake it. Do the egg wash if you're using it right before you put it in the oven. So we're gonna bake this at 350 for about 30 minutes. Okay, so the baked brie is out of the oven. I let it cool for about 10 minutes because if you cut into it when it's really hot, all that cheese is just going to ooze out all over your board. So I like to serve it on kind of like a charcuterie style board. And if you have a cake lifter, that makes it super easy to transfer. Otherwise, 
use your hand, very carefully so the bottom doesn't fall out. And then we're just going to decorate the board. And I like to add some grapes. I like to use some seasonal fruit that's around. So if you use pumpkin butter, maybe garnish with like some walnuts, and you can even use some of those little decorative pumpkins would be great. And some crackers, of course, so that you can scoop up your brie and you have something to put it on. And I like to use an assortment of crackers, like a gluten-free cracker and then a regular cracker. These Rainforest Crisp crackers are really good. And I like that they also have figs, so I try to marry together all those flavors from the brie. And I like to put some greenery on here. So I have some fresh rosemary. And since we're using figs, I'm gonna put one little fig on top, just so you know what's in there. And then, just for some added color, I like to add some pomegranate seeds. And then you can just sprinkle these on the board. Cranberries look great with this as well. I love to put cranberries on here. Even some dried cranberries would be great. And then maybe put the rest of your figs all around. And there you go, there's your baked brie. So now we're gonna cut into it and enjoy. So look how melty and oozy and buttery that is. It's so amazing. I'm just gonna take a cracker and load it all up on my cracker. I cannot wait to take a bite of that. Mm. It's so buttery and sweet. That fig jam is just perfect. This recipe is perfect for enjoying while reading one of Harlequin Books fall titles. You can find all of their titles on harlequin.com. Be sure to follow Harlequin Books on both Instagram and YouTube, and follow The Suburban Soapbox also on YouTube and Instagram. Thank you again to Harlequin Books for inviting me to share one of my favorite fall recipes. I hope you enjoy it.